All right, join with me today is Tana, and we have a, I, I believe it's a relatively positive post, and I did cover this in part in yesterday's video, but this is a direct response uh, to the player's voice movement and uh, talking about the formation of a uh, player's council and ambassador envoy type situation made up of the players. Uh, join with me to t is Tana, and um, I just wanted to ask you, you had a lot of issues with the game when you quit the game, and uh, a lot of people have been asking, firstly, let's just get this out of the way, are you considering coming back to Marvel Strike Force? Uh, so when I quit, I had a bunch of very specific reasons why I quit, and very specific things that were like, if they brought back, like, if they fix this, then I would look at coming back. This post plus the previous posts and everything kind of has addressed 90% of them. There's, like, one or two things left on my list. Like, basically one thing left on my list that I'd like to see addressed. And But, I mean, yeah, probably going to be coming back if, you know, things keep going the way they're going and keep going positively. All right, and then... What we're going to answer at the end of the video is, uh, like you, I and everybody I've talked to, uh, we all have a reasonable amount of skepticism on whether or not this is going to work. You know, is this just to meet some sort of deadline to push the, the merger through? And is this going to be effective? Uh, so I, I hope to address that um, by the end of this conversation. Let's talk about what they said, and then we're gonna talk about the different points, and then we're gonna wrap it up with, you know, whether or not we think this is gonna work or not. Um, they're talking about that the, basically where this post came from was through the conversations of the Player Voice Council. Now, you had some feedback and and uh, with that Player Voice Council. What's your experience with them? Uh, amazing. Um, I have I was in it for a while, and then when I kind of quit the game, I quit. But they've also, you know, they reached out to me during that time and stuff. Um, Eve Dog kind of kept me in the loop of what's going on and everything. They're, they're amazing. Like, um, it's it's a lot similar to, like, the, the MPO that we originally had, like, way, 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 way back at the start of the game, mm -hmm. which was great. Like, a player organization rather than uh, fix this kind of thing. Like... It, something that's meant to be long term which is good yeah so to, to bring up people to speed they're not familiar with this this it was a very professionally drafted well out well thought out um not aggressive by the way not aggressive but um a movement of over five thousand people at start but made up of the you know a lot of the top alliances and leaders over four or five hundred alliances and it was a 40 page document that was well thought out that was presented to scopely saying, hey, we want to work with you to move the game forward because some things are slipping through the cracks and the game is headed in a bad direction and better communication will lead to a better experience for everyone. That, that's the general idea of the player's voice movement, correct? Yeah, yeah. Working with the devs rather than kind of holding them hostage or going against them kind of thing like it's not a uh, us versus them it's a let's work together and do this together yeah and and the way that i read the document and, and their approach to them is like hey we're, we're organized and we're serious but they weren't threatening at first but you could tell that they they could if they wanted to right <laughs> you know that was definitely oh, definitely, like, definitely on the table right definitely it was it was there like you know we've got this organization we can do stuff with it but we want to work with we, you we want to kind of help you as much as possible okay slower -ker character release and more rework so they talk about moving forward three new characters per month and uh that is their historical average recently it's been closer to four and then they this is the main thing i think right here we're also establishing a more predictable schedule of when character shards will become more accessible after the initial release. Uh, these details will be shared with you soon. Now, I'm hyper skeptical of this when I think about Agatha and Icarus as being characters yeah. that they held on forever. What's your take on this? That, it, like, it depends on what it comes out of. Is It's like, you know, if we will release every character as farmable within a year, um, then, you know, that's not going to be great. If it's six months, then that's a lot better. Um, and it depends on what they count as, like, you know, right more accessible do you count premium orbs do you count whatever but that's one thing that like once they put that out there it's out there they can't take that back or anything um yeah i largely don't know what this means and you know there's some characters that are you know there's legendary characters there's you know dark dimension characters there's horsemen's there's you know king is in a weird category what is king right you know and what is 
Spider Weaver and Vol and and what about Zombie Iron Man? I have a million questions on how this is going to work. So hopefully this is good. Then they I hope it's kind of like even across the board. Like all the characters will be, you know, classified the same way if they're like not not legendaries and stuff, but like normal characters classified the same way, kind of thing. Yeah, Whether they're top because, tier or because mm. they they did us dirty with Icarus and Agatha. Would you agree? Yeah, they did us dirty uh, 18, with those. I think it was sixteen months or something like that. Ridiculous yeah. for Icarus. <laughs> okay, and then. For character reworks, the team has shifted gear to focus more on updating older characters. Now, they said that they have uh, a timetable that's already set in mo motion, uh, you know, which is usually six to eight months. What's your take on this? This reminds me of something that happened where we had the dev call with them. And I remember. They, oh, no, sorry. I, I had the interview with them, and they were saying how much they loved reworking old characters. And then literally the dev call after, they were like, we're going to be slowing down character reworks. So it feels like they've kind of shifted gears back to, you know, we love doing reworks and stuff, which I like because, you know, stuff like Star-Lord and stuff that people have invested in that are sitting there and having no kind of use. I don't like when stuff sits there and has no use. So it'll be interesting to see how it kind of goes. More gold. So um, this is kind of interesting. So they, they're mentioning that there's going to be a, a meaningful amount of gold in the new Strike Pass. Now, in my opinion, uh, they did add in my opinion, a meaningful amount of gold to the war season rewards, which it comes out twice a month. Uh, what's your take on this? I think that, you know, it's it's good, um, but it's the long-term stuff that I'm kind of worried about more. Like, will they keep addressing the gold economy and stuff? Like, this is good short-term, amazing short-term, but long-term. Yeah. How they and, kind of keep going with it. And I fully expect this to be a... Um, Nobody's going to agree on what a, a meaningful amount of gold is, right? I just don't think. Oh, yes. Nobody... Some people want to level yeah. everything day one. Some people yeah. are like, you know, we're, we're fine. That's what it is. It'll be kind of. All right. And even if they did inject a, a, a meaningful amount of gold in the system, you know, they're still going to be training mats. So I, I think this yep. is a step in the right direction. And, and I'm going to, I'm the, I think the, the tone for this video is I'm cautiously optimistic. Well, well that's a fancy word right there. Cautiously optimistic. <laughs> All right. So this is something that I've talked about earlier in the week player agency and theory crafting and they go into detail uh that they're going to be s significant changes to season four and beyond opening opportunities for theory crafting we have already shared our plans for the room changes with the player council and we will include them moving forward uh they've shared these plans with me and i can confirm uh that the spirit of player agency and theory crafting was presented to me and it was definitely a work in progress. Um, what, what's your take on this? Uh, you know, basically what's happening with season three and season two and, you know, and going forward to it, season four. I think that more broad traits, which is what they seem to be indicating here, is is always going to be a good thing. I love the theory crafting around Cross and Crucible. It's what I loved about like season one and stuff. And then they kind of backtracked a fair bit with season two and three. So season four going forward and having it like more broad will be amazing. Um, I think the thing that I'm worried about with player agency is more the raids. Like they said that in the next incursion raid won't have those kind of weird modifier things or yeah. something. I think that they should just get rid of them for the current incursion raid. Like just get rid of those modifiers that make it so that, you know, uh, Bionic Avengers absolutely suck and stuff. They, they did us dirty in the incursion raids, like specifically with like, web warriors and bionic and and the tech the whole tech part and mystic they just did yep. it sturdy right uh, oh yeah they, they did it sturdy that's kind of one huge thing that i was like no nope, i don't like this so the fact they're getting rid of it for the next raid is great and that's a huge step forward but you can also address the current raid that's going on it's not like cosmic crucible where it's like the next kind of you know month we have to put up with it this is the something we have to put up with for the next six months year so just get rid of it <laughs> All right, and so this this part here is interesting. It says no more orb hoarding events. We're doing our part to reduce the need for hoarding by removing certain event types. We're changing the July schedule to ensure no event reward opening for gold orbs and training orbs. And I know that the top comment and thought uh, when I presented this yesterday is all of that. I just have to save my my gold orbs and training orbs until August, <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, well I'm not saying that they're getting rid of them all together, right? Oh, because that's what it says right here. No more. I mean, what is that supposed to mean right there? I mean, it's 
and no more orb hoarding events seems to be pretty straightforward and then they yeah. also suggest that they're going to be doing something with leaderboards because uh, i know that's been a source of contention uh for example one leaderboard is planned for july versus having seven in may um I, I guess there's not a lot of specific information in here i'm skeptical on how this is going to play out i i think that hoarding in itself was a a strange way of playing this game but just the removal of hoarding in itself doesn't change this concept that occurs quite often in events where mo the events are just whale stones you know yeah. it's they're not actually events it's just a, an offer in disguise what do you think about all that um getting rid of the gold orb and training orbs that was a huge thing on my list because um they specifically said ages ago like back when they were originally doing like the orb avalanche and stuff we don't want to do these because of the fact it removes that player agency of being able to open your orbs when you want to so getting rid of those is great will it be long term we have to see getting rid of leaderboards is great but how does it affect like the the milestone overall and stuff uh, it's the same with like you know the auto claim inbox and stuff right. like how does that affect the milestones? so they make them easier like how does that work kind of thing we'll see right all right the player council has been formed and then this is you know they're they're definitely um this is a big big statement right here we have established a regular meeting cadence with the player council that represents a variety of voices within the community we have found initial meeting very insightful and committed to continue collaboration with the council and so right now the you know i'll put a link to the the discord server the players council discord server they're currently uh voting in members for the council so if if you're watching the video and you want more information on what this is or want to be involved with this um what's your take on that uh that's huge that's something they can't roll back once they do it like now that they've announced that player council happening and everything like that they need something huge to get rid of it so hopefully that's something that can kind of keep pushing forward for you know positive change it's it's a huge monumental thing in like a video game to actually go and be like we're going to listen to our players and form like a council of players to kind of listen to and everything like um this is going to potentially be one of the biggest things that can happen to the game in a positive way. All right, so two things. Uh, long term, do you think this is going to work? And secondly, you said there was one, there was one thing that they did not address or they couldn't address. Uh, talk about that. Okay. Uh, long term, I think that I am, as we said before, cautiously optimistic. I think that some of the stuff that they're announcing now is stuff that they can't take back. Like now that it's talked about player agency they can't really go back and say oh we're going to get rid of that again once they've you know said about the gold orbs and training orb stuff um they can't you know bring it back for at least uh july the player council they can't get rid of it's stuff that we can potentially see kind of go forward for quite a while so cautiously optimistic that they keep kind of doing good i guess yeah. um the one thing that i still have on my list Wait, I just want to mention two things, actually. So the one thing I still have on my list is fixing the ISO 8 system to match the initial announcement where you can switch between the unlocked classes for free at any time, so don't be afraid to experiment. You can't experiment with ISO 8 at all. Like, once you kind of get something to blue ISO 5, good luck getting it to blue ISO 5 in, like, Raider or something like that to play around with it. So bringing back that theory crafting there would be huge, especially with, like, things that are specifically cosmic crucible that are like you know strikers do xyz or fortifiers so well um, and that wouldn't be that hard to change if they wanted to for example you know it costs 800 and something thousand a blue iso 5 to do like striker right to finish off you know the yep but to do the second one why can't it cost a hundred thousand yeah like if they want to still co make it cost then do that or you know re just reduce the cost of being able to upgrade them uh, like to blue iso 5 altogether yeah or, just to, there's just, lots of different just, things just, they can do once you've done the initial one of striker and you want to switch it to raider you know have it cost like a hundred thousand why does it have to cost another eight hundred thousand yeah. it, it if they wanted to change that they could uh it's something that that we could ask i i also one of the things i mentioned yesterday is you know they, they back in the day they blew us off on um the slingshot and arena and and made it sound like it was an actual feature that they intended maybe they yeah. can address that now like the the old management team had no interest in 
uh, the amount of time it would take to correct that. And maybe they will now. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the other thing I did want to mention is in the previous player voice one back on the 22nd of July, uh, 22nd of June, they addressed every single bug that I brought forward to them. I sent a huge list of bugs forward um, <laughs> that was uh, like, for example, Spider Weaver, Red Hulk, Dormammu, Rogue, Titania. They addressed every single one of those. Um, and that was a list that i'd had going for ages so the fact the player voice was able to push to get those fixed was great and huge shout out to matt for like going and addressing them <laughs> yeah all right um, so cause... i think being uh cautiously optimistic and reasonably skeptical that the, skeptical that this is going to work i think is uh you know given the history of the game and marvel strike force and scopely and fox next i mean it's uh but i i i have not been super uh excited about these player movements in the past but i am about this one yep um it's really great like i quit the game until they improve the game was my whole thing i didn't want to quit because i enjoy this game but there were so many different issues that i had that it was ridiculous so the fact that actually going and addressing all of them is really really great okay so in the description of the video there will be a link to the discord for players voice movement and then i will also uh put a link to your channel you want to say before we go um i if i come back it's because they've improved the game it that's like the big thing um and if i'm coming back then you know i look forward to being on your channel more often hopefully and trying to go through data mining and everything again and look at all that stuff sounds good all right guys thanks for watching bye for now